Luke chapter 4, that's our reading for this morning. I want to cover with you verses 14 down to about verse 30 this morning as Jesus is going to return to his home town of Nazareth, a place where obviously the people knew him, saw him grow up, and he's going to make his way to the synagogue where worship for the Jews would have taken place, a place he would have been most familiar with. So let's read the text together and appreciate his sermon and the response to it, beginning there at verse 14. Luke chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible says, And Jesus returned to Galilee, and the spirit of the power and news about him spread through all the surrounding district. And he began teaching in the synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and he opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who were oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, sat down, and the eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all were speaking well of him and wondering at the, the gracious words which were falling from his lips. And they were saying, is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, no doubt you will quote this proverb to me. If this physician heal yourself, whatever we heard was at Capernaum. Do here in your hometown as well. And he said, truly, I say to you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. But I say to you in truth, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah. And the sky was shut up for three years and six months when a great famine came over all the land. And yet Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath and the end of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. There were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, but only named the Syrian. And all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage as they heard these things. And they got up and drove him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill on which their city had been built in order to throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went his way. You know, ancient writings record for us how the synagogue worship was conducted in that day, and they would have recited a text more specifically. They would have recited Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. There would have been prayers. There would have been songs of praise to God. And then there would have been a reading from the law of Moses and then a reading from the prophets. And all of this would have concluded with some type of benediction. So it's time for Jesus to read from the prophets, as we can read here. And he's given, well, he actually turns to Isaiah 61 at verse 1, where it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to, to bring good news to the afflicted. He sent me to the blind. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. He, Jesus didn't quote those last two um, verses as, as we see there. So this was good news, right? A time of joy and peace. Good things would be happening when the Lord's anointed come. And obviously a prophecy referring to the coming Messiah. And now he's here. And Jesus makes known to them, I'm here. The scripture, he says, has been fulfilled. You can only imagine the people's response. What in the world, right? This is Joseph's boy. What are you talking about? Jesus knew this response was coming from these people in his hometown, even though they had heard of the signs that he had performed in other places. They were like their ancestors before. Jesus says, truly, a prophet is not welcome in his hometown. And to illustrate, he brings up Elijah, who too lived and worked in a time of Israel's unfaithfulness. So God, he'll send him to heal a Gentile widow. And the same with Elisha. So he sent him to heal Naaman, the Syrian, even though there were many Jewish lepers, Jesus says. Now, these Jews, they didn't want to hear that. And it made it angry because it made him angry because it was true. So they ran him out of his hometown and even tried to kill him. What's the point? Jesus knew his own wouldn't accept him as the son of God. The anointed come to heal them. This was symbolic of the whole Jewish nation. They would reject him. They would crucify him. And Jesus would come and he would die for all. He would die for the poor, for the blind, for the captive, the oppressed, Jew and Gentile. Here's what I want you to think about, brethren and friends. This is us. Spiritually speaking, apart from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we're all spiritually poor, we're blind, we're captive, we're oppressed. But Jesus, let's be thankful. Let's accept his will. Let's do it to the best of our ability with a gratitude of heart, understanding that he loves us. And he died to set us free from the bondage of sin. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, Father, for another day in your word, Father. We're so very thankful. Father, we continue to pray for the Hart family. We're mindful right now, Father, of our sister Margie Mendel, Father, she's in the last stage of her life, good and godly woman. Father, be with David and the family as they care for him. Father, we're also mindful of our, our brother Bob, Father. So thankful that his surgery went well, that he's able to be home, Father. We just pray that you would continue to be with him, Father, and we just praise you for answering our prayers, Father, on, on his behalf. Father, be with us today. We ask for opportunities to do good, and as always, Father, we're so thankful for your son for his willingness to come die for the poor, the afflicted, the oppressed. Father, that's us. May we always be humble and recognize it, Father. 
be thankful in Jesus' name we pray.